Whoa. I have never been introduced that way. God, you made it happen, I guess. First of all, I have to say thank you to the one who created me, the almighty God that I serve. Thank you. Thank you so much, God. That's a, that's a, that's a treat for me right there in the entrance. Like uh, um, I was just introduced. My name is Jenny Ibarra, Blackman, Rosales, whatever you can call me. At this point, I'm just Jenny. I'm a humble servant of God that created me and he gave me who I am right now. And I'm coming just to give you my little feedback of 56 years of existence. And I'm happy to share it with my family and friends. Jenny has two flags. Incredible, but yes, I'm dual citizen. I was born and raised in Panama, Central America. And I came as fast as I could to Texas. <laughs> People usually think about coming to the United States. I came to Washington, D.C. for the first 10 years. And then I moved to Texas as quick as I could because they told me this was the place. And believe me, they didn't tell me this was the place. And then Montgomery County was the, the best county in Texas. And I'm proud to serve this community because he has called me to do so. Today is a special day for me. Why? In my country, in, in 1821, um, eventually on May, when they started deciding that they were going to go ahead and change Mother's Day from, from May, and that was a group of women, eventually from the Rotary Club, that they did the change. So Panama celebrates today the Mother's Day as of a bill that was created on December 1930. So I am dedicating this show to all the mothers in the world, but especially to my mother that is, and I don't want to cry, and I told myself I'm not going to cry. I haven't seen her since 2020, and it's my life. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I please would like to say some words in Spanish for those that are listening to me. There's a bunch of people in Panama listening, a bunch of people everywhere in the world that they grew up with me, my high school kids, friends, and everybody. So I need to address the Hispanic community a little bit. Gracias a todos por estar conmigo hoy. Porque el Señor ha puesto en mí la manera de cómo comunicarme y darle a Él la gloria. Dedico esto a mi madre, Nelly Barra y a todas las mujeres en Panamá que hoy celebran el Día de las Madres. Gracias por ser parte de mi vida y por poder tener, haber nacido en el terruño más bello del mundo, que es Panamá. Today as well, we celebrate the Immaculate Concession. I'm Catholic, as you can see. <laughs> And I am proud to be Catholic. Panama has the most amazing flower that was given to us, which is the flower of the Holy Spirit, which is our national flower. And we celebrate today, and kids are doing today the first communion, most of them in Panama. See, Panama is thought to be a little city with nothing. And when I see you, show you pictures like this, that's when you realize that Panama is not that little anymore. Panama is a cosmopolitan Miami in the middle of Central America. We have the most amazing beaches and the most wonderful places that a lot of Americans are retiring on. We got the best coffee made in the world, a geisha coffee. Panama, the, eventually the Panamanian hats, what they call Panama hats, were made in Ecuador and they kept the Panamanian name. Then, of course, it's the only city that has their own within forest. You know, it's so, it's so cool about that. I was reading, I'm like, I didn't thought I was born in the coolest city in the world, but yes, I am. 
Then we, we were the first ones to adopt the American dollar. The only country in the world where there's a sunrise in one ocean and a sunset in the other one. And I was able to experience this for so many years. Then it's the only country in the world that has two oceans united. So my, my team today is why and who I am. Why there's a Panama Canal. Why everything was created because of the purpose of uniting the world. So guess what? I was here to join that venue and I didn't even knew that was going to happen in later, later years in my life. There's so many information about the Panama Canal and how often it's being used. But there's a purpose. It's for, to unite all these continents. We're uniting five continents. And you guys are going through it. And I'm so proud that you're going through my country to go to Chile, to Argentina, if you're coming from the United States, or if you're coming from China, or you're coming from anywhere in the world, you have in a boat, you have to cross the Panama Canal. And that's why we are a land of mixtures. As you can see, that's Mr. and Mrs. Ibarra, Nelly Ibarra, my mother, a beautiful black with a woman with a background of um, Antillas. That means her family from Jamaica married an amazing man from Panama with background of Spaniards. And they had, they raised and they had five kids. My sister Rosa, Alex, my sister Gita, myself, and my baby sister Renee. This is my life. That little baby over there? Yes, that's me. I was cute once. <laughs> and I have to say that. Sometimes I look at my pictures when I'm baby and I'm like, oh, that's me. And then, yeah, that's me. I accept my beautifulness since I was baby. And I'm proud of that. I had the best of both worlds in a socialist country. I was brought up all my first eight years of school in a private, all non-Catholic school. Then I was transferred to a Department of Defense, you know, mixed school, high school. And so I was able to see everything. I, I was able to learn so many things of both of the cultures that I belong to right now. And I didn't even knew that was going to be the beginning of my merger. See, I was being adapted by my parents to come to the United States and merge as a U.S. citizen. But I was learning that since the beginning of my life. I was never the best student. Oh, my God. I was really bad. But guess what? Because I was too young and I was paying attention to many things. But at the same time, Now, I reflect on that, is that I was trying to fit in. All my life, I have been trying to fit in. I didn't know where I fit in. If it was with my classmates from Las Esclavas del Sagrado Corazón, or if it was my classmates from Baboa High School. And at the end, I realized that God gave me the gift of impacting each one of my classmates. And they are right now posting, talking. We have chats of 85 of them. I have chats in WhatsApp. We talk all the time. Because I was able to put a seed of my love in each one of them. And I'm proud. And I thank my parents to have done that. The other thing I did, it was being a mom. It was incredible 14 years that I live, which people don't understand what is domestic violence since they did leave. I came to the United States in 1986, right after high school. I was like a year in college, worked with the Panama Canal Commission newspaper, and 
that's when the issues with the government were getting really, really bad. And my parents looked at me and I said, well, you know something? I always saw the 4th of July fireworks of the New York, in New York, and I wanted to be in the United States. So I guess it's time for me to immigrate. I came in an aircraft, went through immigration without no issue. I was a resident of the United States because of my parents. I came to my grandmother's house in Washington, D.C. My life started. I met, I went to college, American University. I met the father of my kids, got married. And I started having a life that was not that happy. I didn't, I cannot explain you how much a person that is living domestic violence and abuse impacts your life for the rest of your life. It, even if you go to treatment, even if you go to therapy, even if you succeed in the world, that will mark you forever. But guess what? You learn from those experiences. I was a young woman married with a young guy that we didn't have experience, none of them. I was not into the path of God. And when you don't follow God, you get punished. He says in the Bible, if you love me and you care for me, I am your only God. And I, you should adore me, not anything else. That's our first commandment. So I was not doing that. Of course, every sin has a punishment. I do not accept to stay in the punishment for the last of your life. It's for you to wake up and realize that you're in the middle of a desert. So I'm gonna talk about the deserts of my life. That was the first one. I found myself with three kids, trying to raise them, trying to make sense of my life. The only thing I could pull out, it was the unconditional love that I had for them. I was able to give them my strength, an unfailing strength that was coming from the higher power that was the one that was holding me. And I teach them that fighting with my spirit or fighting with your spirit, positive spirit, that was the only way to come out of it. I recall so many times going to bed without food, but making sure that the three of them were able to eat. I recall so many times going to the street and asking for assistance, whether it was in a shelter, or whether it was running away or hiding and staying in a trailer home where seven people were leaving and rats were walking on my daughters. Kids, in the middle of the night, the rats were walking. And for me, it was like, oh my God, what am I doing here? I'm the one with education. I'm the one with the power. Because in every household in the world, there is a woman. And even though the man is the head of the household, the woman is the one that creates the home. So I decided that it was time for me to move on. I went, I went home, came back after a year, high, and then I was able to pick up my life. To tell you the truth, there's a great history about this. Today, I can sit with my ex-husband and talk. I'm able to share with him so many things, and I have my kids that they are able to see that we're able to communicate and amicably have a relationship because that can be done. Why? Because when you start forgiving yourself and forgiving the person around you, you start healing. I went through that process and the Holy Ghost did it. That's why I'm dedicating my life to service after this. My corporate world, I started many years ago. Like I said, I was in Washington DC I work for the National Council of La Raza. That's what I got more, the most experience in the corporate world. I was the assistant to the vice president of public relations of a 
one of the largest lobbying companies for the Hispanic community in Washington, D.C. They're called United Us right now. Raul Izaguirre, Arnoldo Resendez, and all their staff welcomed me, and I was able to learn for many years. I was there for almost eight years, and I was able to learn, adapt, and polish myself for what I am right now. Then I came to, to Texas, worked for Bilkin and Elsie, Bil, Bil, Bilkin and Elsie, Elkins, whatever, downtown, downtown, and I'm sorry for my accent. That's another thing that I have to bring out to you guys. Um, downtown, and I worked for several companies here, but I, I was hired for Continental Airlines in 2005, and I worked almost 15 years until 2020. I'm, I'm a proud ex-con, that's what they call, you know, ex-con, exactly. That's what they call Continental Airlines ex-employees. Oh God, throw me to the wolf and I'll be leading the back. Yes, that's me. When you learn to survive, when you learn to focus, and I cannot say focus, my kids told me that. They say, mama, your accent is bad. You cannot be saying focus. You need to say concentrate. <laughs> so when I concentrate, according to them, I, I'm able to gasp every single spirit around because all of us have a profound spirit in us. And I'm able to understand that I need, and that time I was needing two jobs to make it, that I was exceeding in everything that was planned ahead of me and that I was making it. And of course, there were jokes. They invited me to become one of those nice people that go and have commercials. And this one was with Walmart. Hey, what am I gonna say in Walmart? Guess what? They keep running that commercial still. And I'm like, Jenny is in Walmart and I can see myself. How do I do that? Those are anecdotes that my granddaughters and my grandkids are gonna know about. My grandma was in Walmart. Hello, thinking about it. I shouldn't have been in Walmart. I should have shown Target or something like that, but you know, it didn't happen. They selected me and I had to do whatever it was. Then of course, I will never be remembered as a woman that keeps her mouth shut. That's part of what it is. I'm always gonna be remembered as somebody that speaks out and don't, doesn't, doesn't keep her mouth shut. And that comes back to my origins. The other day, somebody asked me, is that in every single Panamanian trait, woman, woman trait? And I said, no, that's a Jenny trait. My mother and my father, poor of them, I feel sorry for my parents because they really battle with me. I have to be proper like my sisters. And I love that. I was not proper like my sisters. I was the black sheep of my family, even though my sister, my oldest one says, Jenny, you shouldn't be saying that. But when I meant, the black sheep, not that I was doing bad things, but basically the outspoken one. Because right now, I see my sisters as a gain of my life. They're my best friends, all of them. And that's when I realized that you can have more than one best friend in your life. I grew up with four of them, and all of them are able to understand who I am. It's like my daughter. My daughter has the most amazing smile, and that is hereditary. But guess what? Hers is perfect. Mine is not. Because her hasn't been as beaten as mine. But I keep telling her all the time. There's a song by Barbara Streisand that says, smile. And guess what? That's my motto. The more I smile, the more I joke, the more I relate to people, that's the more that I'm able to know that God is working on my path because God is not a God of sadness. He's not a God of conflict. He's not a God of division. He's a God of unity. And when you walk into a room and you smile, you make everybody around you smile, regardless of how their day has been. 
So I keep telling my daughter all the time, baby, you have the most wonderful, beautiful smile. Of course, I pay $2,000 for it, but you need to put it outside. You need to smile. You need to, you need to just, your joy of the light that needs to be going through you. I met my friends of LMC. That was a whole shebang in Montgomery County. Leadership of Montgomery County. I was about to quit after the second time. And I had Rita Wills, one of my mentors, said to me, you need to graduate. I went and called my coach, Bonnie Hoover. And I said, Bonnie, I'm having issues. I cannot do this. She said, Jenny, you need to have a schedule now. Because I was not forced to have a schedule because I didn't know that a radio show was going to be so impactful. So I was like, you know, I just wake up and go. I kept forgetting meetings. I kept forgetting things that I needed to do. My kids are like, mom, what's going on with you? People were calling me. And I'm like, this is not normal. I needed to rearrange my life. So LMC brought a commitment. That same year, not only I graduated from LMC, I went ahead and took Mujeres de ACE. That is, um, ACE is a Hispanic Alliance for Entrepreneur. And of course, it's with the Hispanic community, women. I took both of them, graduated both of them, and I became noticeable. I was a notable woman of Conroe. I look myself in that, in that picture, in that really beautiful uh, description that was done by Miss Margie Taylor, and I laugh. I wasn't thinking about noticeable. Guess what? 2020 had made the impact positively in my life, even though I thought it was the worst year in my life. Why? Again, going back to the, desert, the 40 days in the desert that Jesus Christ went through, I went to another one. The same year that is 2020, the pandemic hits, I lost my job after 15 years with United Airlines. I was the breadwinner. I was making $6,000 a month. And I was like, what the heck? Where am I going to go? At the age of 56 in my country, 53 in my country, you're not hireable. Nobody wants to see you when you're 50. Eventually, when you go to an interview in Panama, they ask you for your picture. So you have to send them the resume with your picture. Over here, thanks, Lord, that doesn't happen because I would have been an employee. But it's still... I couldn't be unemployed because I had the most worst accident somebody could have. I fell. I broke four bones in my body. I had to learn how to walk. I was on canes. I was depressed. I was unemployed. And bills were piling up. Hello. This is the woman that came out of domestic violence. This is a woman that was able to learn how to speak correctly without saying focus. This is the woman that was able to raise three kids by herself, put them through college and pay their bills. This is the woman that was born through an extraordinary woman in Panama that the only thing she has done in her life was work since she was 12 years old. I reflected about my parents and my mother's life. And I had to say to you, I started praying. My, co my, my classmates in LMC saw me walking with two surgeries back to back. I had four surgeries on my back. And I did graduate from LMC, didn't miss a day. Because to me, Voces en Acción was created by God and I needed to give it to the community. And the only way was educating myself, educating about the needs and nots of Montgomery County. So that was my imp impulse. Yeah, it was the end of an era. And the beginning of a new one, I'm gonna tell you, I wasn't expected I was gonna start talking to you guys so soon about my life because recollecting me in my thoughts, 
I always be, I'm the one that put people on the spot. And they're the ones answering my questions. Now today, I am on the spot. And I hate it. It's scary like hell. When I talk to Andy and to Elizabeth, which I give them thanks, I say, yeah, I can do this. Hello. A month ago, I was like, how am I going to do this? Because I always talk about somebody else's business, somebody else's achievement, somebody else. And it was easy. When you, when you go to journalists, journalists and you're a journalist, you, you are able to understand. When you're studying sociology, you are able to understand. But guess what? When it comes to you reflecting of your message to somebody else, I want that message to make sense. My message of resiliency. It came to me, resiliency, yes. The desert, getting up out of it, starting stronger, and yes, the truth in action, Jesus. These are the influencers. All of you have influencers. These are my influencers. Every single one of them have made an impact in my life. From Bonnie Hoover to Kelly McDonald to my mentors, Margie Taylor and Josh Mack, to my friends, my coach, you know, Congressman Luttrell and his wife. There's so many of them that decided that they were going to support Voces en Acción. And they were going to give me feedback and they were going to help me. I have to thank them. I have to thank so many people in my life that my resiliency is not only by me. It's been created because of God and because of people that have supported me through my life. That my life is a path. That my blessings are given by God. That my faults that I took are just to get up because from the floor, I keep telling my daughter, from the floor, you're going to get up. There's no other way to go. And of course, the unconditional God, love that I'm receiving from everybody. And I'm just going to leave you with this thought before I leave. You see the beautiful drop of water right there? You see the blue color on it? We are the perfect drop of water according to the eyes of God. The color that we see is our life. The beauty is within us. Keep searching for that beauty. Keep being positive. Keep being smiling. The resilience will come and the endurance will be the path to your creator. In my case, to Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you.